In the headlines, EFCC arrests fake army general over 270 million Naira fraud. River State Government vows not to spare any illegal refinery. University of Joss management cautions students on safety. And on the foreign scene, one dead, 30 rescued in new channel migrant boat accident. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Now the news in detail. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, says its operatives attached to Lagos Zonal Command of the Grand Tigraft Agency have arrested a fake army general, Bolarinwa Olua Shagun, over an alleged 270 million naira fraud. The commission, through its spokesman, Wilson Owujaren, explained that this suspect, who posed as a general in the Nigerian army, allegedly made false representations to the complainant, Kodef Clearing Resources, that President Muhammad Buhari had shortlisted him to be appointed as Chief of Army Staff and needed a short grant to press and process the appointment. Allegedly forged a letter of appointment as a Chief of Army Staff, purportedly signed by the President, and showed the same to the victim, who further proved his claim. The fake general, upon his arrest at his house in the Alagbadu area of Lagos State on Wednesday, six pump action guns, three cartridge bullets, a swagger stick and several forged documents were recovered from him. The EFCC noted that the suspect will be charged to court as soon as investigations are concluded. A video has emerged to show fighters suspected to be members of the Islamic State for West African Province, ISWAP, on Monday attacked the Nigerian Army University Campus for Security and Strategic Studies in Buratai Town, Bio local government area of Borno State. An online publication, Daily Post, reports that two employees of the university were killed by the insurgents. The medium gathered that the insurgents overran the soldiers guarding the campus who, after exhausting their bullets, reportedly took to their heels. According to a staff who speaks to the publication on the condition of anonymity, said that the two staff were killed in the attack. Meanwhile, authorities of the University of Jos have cautioned students of the institution to always be wary of their movements and be conscious of their whereabouts as they resume for the 2020-2021 academic session. This followed the killing of late Miss Jennifer Anthony, a 300-level student of the university, by a suspected ritualist Moses Oko. Dixon Adama reports. The University of Jos management have warned their students to be very careful and be watchful of their movement, particularly with the recent incidents of ritual killings in just the Plateau State capital, of which girls have become the victims. The recent cases are that of Plagna Solomon and as well as Jennifer Anthony. However, the killer of Jennifer Anthony has been caught and was paraded yesterday at the police headquarters, but that of Plagnan Solomon is said to be unravel. But in all, the guests have been warned to watch their movement, as well as all every other students have been warned to watch their movement because uh, the idea is that killers are in town, ritualists are in town, and uh, they are suspected to be Yahoo boys who have been pursued from Port Harcourt or Lagos or wherever they have, must have come from and they have invaded Joss because Joss is supposed to be a new place for them. So girls should watch out, people should watch out and parents should want their words to be very careful. Trust TV will be on ground to follow up all the issues that have been happening in this respect and we will bring it to you accordingly. Dixon Salami Adama reporting from Joss. And still on security, the Nigerian government has procured about 200 combat vehicles and other equipment to help strengthen its war against crime. President Muhammadu Buhari commissioned the operational vehicles and equipment at the police fort headquarters in Abuja, saying that the government is very positive that the equipment will augment strategies by the nation's security forces to rid the country of insecurity. Trust TV's Sagir Ibrahim has the details. 
As part of efforts to combat crime and the rising rate of insecurity in the country, the Nigerian police force has taken delivery of about 200 guerrilla combat trucks, over 100,000 combat helmets and combat vests, among other tactical equipment. Speaking during the commissioning of the equipment at the force headquarters in Abuja, President Muhammadu Buhari, who was represented by the Minister of Police Affairs, Megari Dingyadi, called on the police force to make adequate use of the equipment in its ongoing fight against crime. I am convinced that the Inspector General of Police and his management team will commit officers and men of Nigerian police to reciprocate government efforts through judicious and the effective use of these facilities for improvement of Nigerian security architecture as government will not condone any act of abuse and malhandling of the facilities provided from very limited resources. He also called on the force to continue to maintain the highest level of professionalism as they discharge their duties. I therefore urge officers and men of Nigerian police force to continue putting in their best in the discharge of their, their duties and to adopt a holistic internal security mechanism in the country so as to ensure the provision of conducive environment needed to boost operations of Nigerian police force and by extension and place a more peaceful and safe country for economic buoyancy and an improved livelihood for the citizenry. Also speaking was the Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Police Trust Fund, Ahmed Aliyu, who appreciated the President and the National Assembly for their support towards ensuring that the fund fulfills its mandate. I will not conclude this without once again thanking Mr. President for not only ensuring that the MPF um, bill reached the fruition of becoming an act, but to also thank Mr. President for supporting the board and the management in ensuring that we move closer day in, day out in achieving the objectives of the trust fund. On his part, the Inspector General of Police, Usman Al-Kali, pledged the commitment of the force to continue its partnership with the Police Trust Fund towards the actualization of its mandate. We will continue to partner with the Trust Fund and we will not delay in our rendering any form of assistance and support to ensure that the Nigeria Police Trust Fund maintains the momentum while achieving its laudable objectives to the satisfaction of Nigerians. Al-Kali also added that the newly procured equipment will enhance the operational capacity of the force to face the problems of banditry, kidnapping, terrorism and other vices head-on. With the launch of these critical operational assets, our operational capacity shall be enhanced well enough to address current challenges of banditry, kidnapping, armed robbery and sundry violent crimes that have been threatening our nation in recent times even though there is room for improvement. I call on all Nigerians, corporate bodies, multinational organizations to key into the goals of the Trust Fund to enable it accomplish its mission. Behind me are some of the 200 guerrilla vehicles which were commissioned by the representative of the President of Nigeria. That's the Minister of Police Affairs, Megari Dingyadi. According to the Executive Secretary of the Police Trust Fund, over 8 billion naira was spent to procure the vehicles as well as 100,000 helmets and combat vests as well as other equipment which are expected to be deployed across the 36 states of the Federation to enhance the fight against uh, crime, criminality and other vices in the country. Sagir Ibrahim reporting for Trust TV. Meanwhile, police in Zamfara State have arrested suspects for different crimes. The crimes range from cannibalism, dealing in human parts, criminal conspiracy, culpable homicide, vandalism of electricity cables, abduction and sale of children, among other crimes. The Commissioner of Police in the state, Ayub El Kana, while briefing journalists in Gusau, the Zamfara State capital, said the suspects were arrested with human parts such as intestines, an esophagus, a male reproductive organ and two eyes. The report. 
The Commissioner of Police, Zamfara State, CP Ayuba Elkana, read out the names of four suspects who deal in human parts and engage in cannibalism as Aminu Baba, 57-year-old, Abdul Shakur Mohammed, 20-year-old, and two other suspects who were between the ages of 14 and 17. While giving insight to what led to the arrest of the four suspects, noting that the arrest of the suspects followed credible intelligence report on the 28th of December 2021 at 9 p.m. Nigerian time, that a corpse was found in an uncompleted building at Barakalao area of Gusau, the capital of the state, with two hands and legs tied in a rag and head covered with polythene bag. The police detective swiftly proceeded to the scene and found the corpse with some of the human parts removed. CPI Ayuba Elkana intimated journalists that on interrogation, the second suspect, Abdul Shakur Mohammed, had confessed that this was the third time he was contracted by the first suspect, Aminu, to search for human parts for him at the sum of 500,000 naira. The second suspect, Abdul Shakur Mohammed, the 20 year old boy, confessed that. This was the third time he was contracted by the first suspect, Aminu Baba, a 57-year-old man sitting down here, to source for human parts for him at the sum of 500,000 naira, which he successfully did for the first and the second time before his arrest while doing the third one. The first suspect, Aminu, also admitted that he paid the three suspects 500,000 naira for every supply of human parts. Based on this, the, the, second, the first suspect connived with Abdullahi Baba and Ahmed Tukun, deceived the victim, took him to an uncompleted building, killed him, and removed the following human parts. The insect intestine, esophagus, penis, and two eyes and took them to the said Aminu Baba, who in turn gave them the sum of 500,000 naira as agreed. He had disclosed that the police operatives also nabbed a female suspect, Aisha Ibrahim, a Nigerian, for stealing her co-wife two-year-old child to sell. She confessed that her actions was in retaliation of the theft of her own son by the co-wife. And in River State, the state governor, Nason Wike, says he will not spare anyone involved in the illegal bunkering and artisanal refinery activities that have caused suit pandemic in the state. Governor Wike maintained that his administration will not succumb to any form of blackmail or sentiment that will be stirred by those perpetrators in an attempt to frustrate efforts at curbing the hazardous business. The report. Governor Wiki has reaffirmed his commitment not to spare any illegal oil bunkering activities in the state regardless of who is involved. The governor made the vow when he took a tour making a long walk through the tracked road into the forest of Obudu community in Ikwere local government area and the forest of Iba community in Emoha local government area with the River State Commissioner of Police, Eboka Friday, and other security chiefs to uncover some crude oil illegal refining sites. Governor Wike noted that confronting this seemingly cartel kind business will not be easy, but he has however vowed to consider it a warlike situation and fight it from the standpoint of the law. But I can't be doing this and be killing my people. No reasonable government will allow that. Right. And I can tell you with all due respect, we'll take this matter. Where is Attorney General? I'm here, sir. We'll take this matter very seriously, Attorney General. All these matters with police. You have to retain the files so that we can prosecute the matter on our own. On our own. I don't want any compromises anywhere. Mm. And then, too, it will not be in the ministry. You have to constitute a legal team. Go and get our friends all over the country. Constitute a legal team so that we can do this prosecution to the last. Governor Wiki has therefore directed the State Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Professor Zakios Adango, to take over the case files of illegal crude oil refinery operators arrested by the police. Governor Wiki said the purpose of confronting this havoc is to ensure that the health of Rivers people is not further hampered by those illegal refining activities. It's a serious matter, and I'm going to take it. If I is a war, it's not poor people, they're a cartel. Yeah. Yeah. You must go and arrest that uh, chief WJ uh, Watcher. WJ Watcher. Yeah. You must arrest that um, Fubara Ohaka. 
I want to uh, change problems. Uh, you, you must arrest them. You must. It doesn't matter how highly placed you are. If you like be the permanent ruler, if I need a regional ruler that is involved, pick it for me. Yes, sir. Let him understand that the law does not respect anybody. And I can assure the people of River State who will fight this matter headlong. I will fight it to the last. Until I leave office, I will fight. He expressed worry over the promise by the federal government to establish modular refineries, but yet nothing has been done. So we must stop this illegal refinery. We must stop it. And I said to the federal government, if you are not willing to do anything, don't promise people. Don't promise people. You do it, you do modular. How can you allow this modular refinery? How? How? And the DPO that was involved, please tell IG, I have no right to dismiss the police officer. But I tell IG, I don't want the man again in my state. People should take him to another state to do a bunker, not a uh, state. Earlier, the Kwe local government area chairman, Samuel Nwanosike, conducted the governor around illegal refining sites at Obodo Isiopo in the local government area. You're still watching Trust TV News Update. Coming up after the break. How domestic gas price keeps fluctuating. This and more after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, it's still Trust TV News Update. Let's take a look at some of our top stories. Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, says its operatives attached to Lagos Zonal Command of the Anti-Graft Agency have arrested a fake army general, Bolarinwa Oluwashogun, over an alleged 270 million naira fraud. And River State Governor Nyesom Wike says he will not spare anyone involved in the illegal bunkering and artisanal refinery activities that have caused suit pandemic in the state. And now in other stories, though COVID-19 vaccination is not mandatory, but willingness to get vaccinated against the pandemic is a priority towards achieving the goal of reaching herd immunity. To this end, River State Primary Healthcare Management Board, in partnership with River State Media for Health, have begun mass vaccination and sensitization campaign towards tackling COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the state. The report. The move is aimed at addressing some of the gaps in knowledge and concerns on COVID-19 vaccines. During the mass vaccination campaign at Mile 3 Motor Park in Port Harcourt, some residents discredited the fear that COVID-19 vaccine will shorten lifespan of those who take it. Some of them who took their second dose said they feel very healthy, hence the reason they are taking another jab. While others who took the first dose explained that they did so to prevent diseases. They promised to spread the message that the vaccine is not a killer. I personally, I don't feel anything like, you know, headache, cold, Whatever my body is, no phys uh, physically, spiritually fit for anything. I've taken the first one, the second one now, so I'm okay. I even like my people at home, I told them they should make sure you know they partake because it's necessary. Well, any person that I see, I will ask them to come and take their own because from the propaganda, they say it's hot, it's uh, killing. But I did not say anything, I did not say anything hot. So I have to advise them to come and take their own. When I take the first dose, um, I feel weak for the first, second day. After that time, I was okay. And I know that government will not allow us to die finish. They are on the throne. They will not kill the people that they are ruling. 
Uh, what I'm telling people is that they're supposed to go and take because when N I N come out, we didn't take it important. But now you cannot get your money without it. Well, I see it. I didn't see any problem on it. But people, people were commenting about it that if you take it, you die. You do this, do that. But the way I took it, now I didn't see anything. It's okay. I never see a very they do. Them. So if I don't see our frantic and sense, and I never get a chance to come out. Go do but today I see them here. My spirit has stepped away. Already, people they talk about them, say this, that, that. But I don't believe that. I believe they na good medicine, Sean. If I take them now, as I take them like this, I get as my body to do me. But I believe it's a, a work. Officials of the Primary Healthcare Board said the state government will continue to intensify advocacy on the importance of taking COVID-19 vaccine in order to prevent further spread of the pandemic across the state. Israel has stressed the need for constant interfaith dialogue to foster tolerance and peaceful coexistence among various religions in Nigeria. Yotam Kremen, charge d'affaires of Israel to Nigeria, said this in his address at a one-day symposium on peace, tolerance and coexistence among different religions held in Abuja. Israel is not only home to the three Abrahamic religions, it's also the place in which the stories from our scriptures took place, be it Jerusalem of King David and Solomon, Nazareth and Bethlehem of Jesus Christ, and Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is tied to the story of the Prophet Wasallam. We are here today to highlight the great role that interfaith dialogue has to play in promoting reconciliation and development among people of all faiths. Interfaith refers to the common ground that is shared by all religions, a concept that upholds mutual tolerance, respect, and love. Ours is a society where people follow different religions, faiths, norms, values and traditions which shape our perception and emotions. It would be of great benefit if such emotions and perceptions led to peace, fraternity, love, and mutual well-being. We are being called daily not only to learn about peace in theory, but to practice it concretely in daily life. Religion is not just about doctrines, about speculative analysis, about just issues that are not practical. It's about implementing the values that we practice about love, about peace, and unity, and so on. Well, we are supposed to understand that it's true that we have different positions. We have different beliefs. And this is not wrong. This is not bad. This is the beautiful of the humanity. This is even what God make on this world, to make people with different sensibility and different believer. So we have to understand that we are different position. We are sometimes not agree with different situation. We have sometimes different story or view of the story, but we are doing coexisting together. And to politics now, women and youth have been urged to actively participate in the upcoming Federal Capital Territory Area Council elections. The call was made during a two-day workshop organized to dialogue with stakeholders ahead of the February 12th FCT Council poll. Trust TV Sagir Ibrahim tells us more. Preparations are already in top gear for the smooth sail of the upcoming FCT Area Council elections. As part of efforts to ensure a smooth and transparent election, stakeholders have already commenced dialogue to ensure proper sensitization of voters who will be electing their leaders on the 12th of February. It is in this light that the Independent National Electoral Commission, the European Center for Election Support and other partners organized an interactive workshop for women and youth who have been urged to actively participate in the electioneering process. At the two-day event, which first began with a town hall meeting with women groups, it was indicated that out of the over 600,000 women in the council, only 200 women voted in the previous election. They were however called to take their destinies into their hands by exercising their right of political franchise. Out of the 601,000, uh, only 217 and nine women voted on election days. 
showing 36% voter turnout. This figure is too poor, and we hope that in the upcoming FCT elections, council elections, more women who have collected their PVC will come out to vote. We will take our destiny in our hands. And despite the abundance of liquefied petroleum gas, popularly known as cooking gas, which experts say is capable of generating over 100,000 megawatts of electricity, the rising cost of the product has forced some LPG users to shift to charcoal or firewood, as consumers of the commodity raise an alarm over the persistent hike in price. Trust TV's Fatima Musa speaks to some consumers on the price of cooking gas. While reacting to the recent marginal drop in the cost of cooking gas, the federal government noted it was putting measures in place to ensure further reduction in the cost of liquefied petroleum gas, popularly called cooking gas. According to findings, the price of 12.5 kg LPG has dropped from 8,800 to between 8,400 and 8,200. In some outlets, the price of the commodity dropped between 7,800 and 8,000. The product had increased by 240% for 12.5 kg, moving up from 3,000 to 10,200 within the first 10 months of the year 2021. Sometime last year, there was a huge increment of gas price in the market. The average price of cooking gas is 750 naira per kg in Nigeria. At least, this is what the retailers sell in the black market and is subject to change due to fluctuation of price over time. We are here to find out what the current price of gas is and also to hear the views of people who use gas within the FCT. Well, the price increase has really affected people going by the income that people are earning. Like, way back we used to buy a kilogram for about 340 something naira and now it has doubled the price so i mean everybody is feeling the brunt of the increase i feel the government should be able to regulate the price and um, drop it down for the masses to be able to actually afford to buy gas and use in their homes honestly speaking the price is so high it's on a higher side in fact i remember the last time i bought my gas at the rate of 8500 honestly speaking the country has gone to something else. And right now as I speak to you, I'm thinking of going back to Chaco. Maybe I will start using Chaco. Since the back of Chaco now is 3,005. And the gas, honestly speaking, I don't think I can really make it. Yeah, because you cook in the morning, afternoon and evening. So you can see, if we are to go on that price, I don't think I can cook. We usually buy gas at the rate of 4,005, later increase to 5,000, 6,000. So going for that higher rate, honestly speaking, is still on the higher side. And that wraps up Trust TV News update for this hour. Do feel free to subscribe and follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Thanks for watching.